Hey folks, let's take a look at tactility on uh, the card pewter from M5 stack. Since recently this is a newly uh, supported device and uh, there's quite a bit of work to adapt all the user interfaces uh, from all the different apps to this, so let's take a look. So we get the desktop and we can control the device with function up and down and the return key to select items. So we can go to apps, to files, or to the settings. So let's take a look first at some apps. We've got a uh, ESP Now chat. We've got a GPIO app, which shows the activity on the GPIO pins. There is a, an I2C scanner that scans for I2C devices. I will show it later. A notes app. You could uh, type anything and save that. Hi. If we go to the bottom, we've got a serial console. You could connect a GPS device on the side port here and then uh, debug the output. And then in the system info, you can browse all sorts of things that you would expect, uh, such as storage and tasks and memory and you know, the devices and the build version. There's of course a file browser. You can uh, look at the internal data or the SD card. So this is the SD card. Let's go back up and then the internal data. There are settings and services with its own data. So let's open some settings, boot settings, then you can uh, change the, the boot data, so what the launcher app is, or maybe an automatically starting app that launches after the launcher is done. The cool thing is that you can actually change it and override it from the SD card. So this is the internal data. You can go to SD card and settings. Then if you put your access points here, they get imported into the system on the boot and you could also override boot properties and other things. There's lots of settings. Let's go to the Wi-Fi first and turn that on. Wi-Fi goes on. It's already connecting automatically because it found the access point settings on the SD card. We want to turn the Wi-Fi on when the device boots. You can also look at the details of the access point. So you can disconnect and forget and automatically connect on boot or not, whatever you like. One of the new cool features is the development app. This allows you, when you enable it like such, it allows you to connect remotely to the device and install apps or uninstall or run them from your computer. So that's super useful during development. Now you've got display settings. You can manage GPS devices. It's not only because we didn't add any, but you can connect a GPS to this port and then uh, you can uh, add it. Then you can select which type. You can also have it automatically detected, but it takes a bit longer to initialize it. Then there's the I2C functionality, which also uses this port, and that's why it's disabled by default. So we can enable it right now. Let's exit the settings. Now we can go to the apps again and open the I2C scanner. Of course, it didn't find any device because we didn't connect anything. So I've got this neat little M5 stack display. We can connect it. Immediately it turns on and you see it reports on address 0x3e. Now, if we press scan again, we find the same device recognized by the system. And uh, yeah, that means uh, it can now be used. We don't have a driver for it yet so it's not doing anything right now but uh, you can connect sensors you can connect anything to it over i2c and then uh, yeah you can double check whether it's properly recognized 
And that's it for the card pewter. Very happy with the quality. The display actually fits all the data that it needs to fit quite well. It's uh, quite a bit smaller than the M uh, M5 stack core S3 and core 2. Core S3 is just uh, touch based. As you can see, it's the same uh, setup. And so, of course, is the core 2. Maybe I'll show a brief comparison with the Lilligo T Deck Plus. I've got apps, and in this case, uh, the calculator shows up twice because the first one is in an external app that was installed to the SD card while the uh, second one is the system built-in one. So if we uh, start either, it will just show the same. You can also browse its, browse its SD card. As you can see, it's got an app folder. That's where the external apps exist. And of course, it has Wi-Fi too. It's already connected. Pretty much looks the same, but we've got much more space here. And of course it works with touch. And that's it.